Hello, good afternoon. My name is Rudy Jalapena. Today we are going to be reviewing the film Batman vs. Superman, The Ultimate Cut. Now when I say The Ultimate Cut, I mean the cut that was released on DVD, the director's cut, so to speak, um, Zack Snyder's original vision for the film that he had. Um, the film has, has come out theatrically and it's been released on DVD. The DVD is about a half an hour longer. It includes the extra footage that was shot but taken out of the film for time purposes. We're going to review the ultimate cut because the ultimate cut is arguably better and the Earth ultimate cut is Zack Snyder's original vision for the film. So we're going to take a look at that and we're going to talk about that for a little bit. We're going to be going over Batman vs. Superman in preparation for Suicide Squad, which comes out this Friday. Now, I'm super excited about Suicide Squad. I have nothing but high hopes for it. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be good, if it's going to be bad. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to do my review and I'll put it up on Friday afternoon so you guys can check that out. Um, but we're talking about Batman vs. Superman and if you've seen Man of Steel, you know that at this point in DC's filmology we have uh, Superman is on earth Superman is alive he's around he's he's saving people he's doing stuff but uh, fear and the actions of Superman are being left unchecked Batman takes on the Man of Steel while the world and Superman wrestles with what kind of hero that he really needs to be now that's where the conflict in the film comes in with Batman versus Superman if you saw if you've seen the theatrical cut you know that there was a lot of things that felt a little weird, felt uneasy in the film. Uh, story elements were left out. Certain things weren't uh, completed. The ultimate cut fixes about, I say about like 85 to 90 percent of those issues. The ultimate cut is better because it does flesh out the characters a little bit more. Um, the film breathes a little bit easier. The film makes more sense in a lot of ways. There are still some fundamental issues that I personally had with the film, but overall the film is a lot better. Um, now, I wanted Superman and Batman in the film, I wanted Superman and Batman to actually have more dialogue than they had together. Um, obviously you've seen from the trailers, you see Superman and Batman arguing, fighting, whatever. I wanted there to be more dialogue about their ideals. I wanted them to have uh, more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation as Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne. I feel like if something like that was put in there, I feel like the film would have had more depth as far as them two whenever character comes into play. Um, so for me, the story kind of lacked in that sense. Like I didn't feel like the characters were fully developed as they could. Now, some will argue that Batman is Batman. Everybody knows Batman. Parents got killed. Um, you know, he's out for, for vengeance, is trying to clean the street. However, I do feel like this film would have been made a little bit more interesting if we had seen Batman's side, uh, or excuse me, Bruce Wayne's ideas versus Clark Kent. That would have just been an interesting contrast to me as a film goer, and uh, they missed the opportunity on that. I think I would have been more emotionally invested in the certain things. Now, with the film, the editing jumped around quite a bit, um, especially in a theatrical cut. There are some uh, cut, quick cuts that are made that you don't really uh, know why they're made. They're, they're, they're just like, it's like kind of choppy and things happen so quick at such a frenetic pace that you kind of lose track of where you are in the story. The ultimate cut fixes a lot of that too, to where Whenever you're watching the ultimate cut, um, everything is a little bit smoother. There's better transitions. Things go, you know, stories go from one one plot to the next a lot easier and a lot smoother. Um, it's not so frenetic. It doesn't feel so jarring whenever you go from one shot to the next. Again, the film has time to breathe, and I think that's that's a testament to Zack Snyder's directing. Now that being said, when it comes to the characters, um, honestly, I. I I really do feel like this is probably one of the best Batmans we've seen on screen. Now, I say that not to discredit anything from Christian Bale, because Christian Bale was awesome, magnificent as Batman. I loved him. But this Batman is a lot grittier. This Batman's a lot meaner, a lot tougher. Mind you, in the film, we're meeting a Batman that is 20 years into his prime. He's, he's actually been doing this crime fighting thing for a long time. So whenever we see Batman, he's had a lot of stuff go down. He's had a lot of stuff happen to him. And heck, we even see him looking at the Robin costume. Uh, so in this film, Robin's gone. Robin's dead. Robin has been killed by the Joker, it looks like. And, you know, this Batman is... Um, this is the culmination of all that junk happening to him. So, uh, Henry Cavill does a great job as Superman. Um, I, I really didn't feel like 
again, I felt like his char character could have been more fleshed out, especially in the theatrical cut. The theatrical, yeah, he had like, I think like 64 lines in the film. And for somebody who's supposed to be a star of the film, that's not a lot. Um, Spider-Man in Civil War had more lines of dialogue than Superman had in Batman vs. Superman, the theatrical cut. Take that into consideration for a second. Um, but again, the ultimate cut uh, fleshes his character out a lot more. We see uh, Clark Kent traveling and going to Gotham City in search of the Batman, and that adds a lot more depth to, to Clark Kent as a journalist, in my opinion. I really, really bought that. I, I love that part of it. <sighs> to me, Lois Lane is the weakest part of this film. Amy Adams is a wonderful actress. I loved her in Enchanted. She was wonderful in The Fighter. She's one of the best actresses. Severely miscast as Lois Lane, in my personal opinion. That's just me. If you believe different, that's totally fine. But in my opinion, she is completely miscast in, in this role. I did not buy her as a journalist. Uh, she did not sell me on her dialogue. She sounded very uh, kind of wimpy. Um, for dialogue that was written to punch up her character and make her very uh, mean and cutthroat and you know this top journalist always gets what she wants she did not deliver in my opinion uh, again that's my opinion if you feel different that's cool but for me she did not deliver um, uh, she doesn't fit to me in this movie she honestly drags this movie down in almost every scene that she's in uh, and I hate to say it, but that includes the ultimate cut now in the ultimate cut her her subplot is is longer, and you know there, it, it makes her journalistic instincts come out more. But I still don't buy it. Again, that's me. Um, I think somebody like Rosario Dawson would have done great as Lois Lane, in my opinion. Um, but that that's just me. Uh, Jesse Eisenberg as uh, Lex Luthor or Lex Jr. as they call him. Um, he's way too goofy at certain times. I understand what he was trying to do. I understand what he's trying to play. I get it. And, you know, I'll, I'll accept it. I'll take it. I'll digest it. But I won't like it. You know, it's not... He, he could have toned down his quirkiness uh, or his awkwardness a little bit more. It was just a lot to take in, especially uh, starting off on a new franchise. You know, starting off, okay, this is a new Lex Luthor. This is a new Superman, new Batman all this stuff. You're throwing a lot at us already, DC, and to make us digest somebody as Lex Luthor who's that kooky and that zany, it's just a bit much. Now, Jeremy Irons as Alfred was awesome. He stole all the scenes he was in, in my opinion. He even acted as a slight conscience for Bruce Wayne in a lot of the film. Um, he was funny, he was cool. Uh, he added levity to the film in a lot of ways. So I think uh, we needed levity like that in an otherwise uh, darker story. Um, speaking of that, uh, the ultimate cut definitely have definitely has more depth to it. Uh, a lot of the complicated story elements are explained a lot better, but the film still lacks a lot of fun that I should expect from a comic book movie. Now, I'm not asking for silly jokes or quips or anything like that. Heaven forbid we go back to Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin. I don't think anybody wants that to come back, but the film itself was very dark, and that's very hairy for a lot of moviegoers to take in. That's hard for, for a lot of comic book fans to take in, much less the average moviegoer who uh, goes and sees movies maybe once a month, if we're lucky, and wants to spend their money on something that they're going to uh, have fun and excitement in, you know? Uh, a fun and exciting film. Now, Diane Lane had one of the uh, best lines of the film. It's okay. I'm a friend of your son's. I figured. The cape. That line right there brings so much levity to the film. It uh, it gives the, the viewer a chance to breathe and kind of take a breath in an otherwise very, very dark and complicated storyline in film. Um, at this point, you've seen Batman and, Ro uh, Batman, and Ro We've seen Batman and Superman fight. We've seen a lot of things happen. And that little line right there, if there were more lines like that peppered around the film, I really feel like more people would have grasped it onto it, would have latched onto it, because uh, it makes the film a more enjoyable experience. It makes your time at the, at the theater, you know, more exciting and more fun. Also, whenever Batman is in the desert, that desert 
dark night scene or whatever that apocalyptic type of uh scene where batman is fighting all those guys in the desert and stuff that's actually really cool i would honestly take another batman film of just that because that looks really really cool and menacing it's it's a it's a horrible dream he's having but that's actually really really cool i love that part so again, to just kind of wrap up, uh, Batman vs. Superman, the ultimate cut, is the better cut of the film. Whenever I reviewed this film originally, I gave it four stars because I had a great time at the film. I went to go see it back at the movie theater a couple more times, and I kind of lowered it to about three stars. That being said, I watched the ultimate cut, and I bumped that back up to four stars because it was enjoyable. The story made a lot more sense. I really feel like uh, the film just was at a better pace, and it was, it was just a better film all around. So... For Batman vs. Superman, the ultimate cut on DVD, I give it four stars. So that's my review there. Suicide Squad releases on Friday. Super excited for it. I'm looking looking forward to it. I'm, I'm, I'm just jazzed about it. Joker's going to be in it. Harley Quinn. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a great, great film. So expect the review up probably on Friday afternoon because I'm going to try and catch it on Thursday night. So my name is Rudy Jalapena. I remind you, as always, to eat your cereal with a fork and do your homework in the dark.